Hello, my name is the Reverend Richard Neal, the Vicar of the Isle of Wedmore, and this begins the third week of our reflections for Advent 2020, taking the theme of those four great words, hope, love, joy and peace. And this is the first in the week for the third week of Advent, focusing on joy, and it's called Rejoice in the Lord Always. Again, I say rejoice. So wherever you are, if you have that opportunity to stop and pause and reflect, I'm going to begin by lighting our Advent candle and praying. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Well, if you've been into a church during this Advent season, you may have noticed the Advent wreath somewhere up at the front. The ring of four candles surrounded by greenery, often with a central white candle. And lighting an extra candle each Sunday is an important part of our Advent worship and symbolises the light growing brighter as we prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus. They are usually purple candles, the Advent colour, but I wonder if you have ever noticed that often one of the candles might be pink. It's a brighter, softer colour, and this candle is lit on the third Sunday in Advent, this year, December 13th, the Sunday just passed. It's a Sunday that is called Gaudete Sunday, or Rejoice Sunday. It's all about joy in the midst of darkness. As we wait for the coming of Christ, we light a cheerful, rose-coloured candle on the Advent wreath as a reminder that our waiting will not be in vain. The Sunday gets its name Gaudete, which means rejoice, from an ancient opening to the day's service. Rejoice in the Lord, always. Again, I say rejoice. And those words come from St Paul's letter to the Philippians, which he wrote from prison. Paul was no naive optimist, and he obviously knew real suffering. And yet, despite the intense unhappiness of imprisonment, Paul was joyful. The word appears 17 times in that short letter. Against the backdrop of this terrible year, as the case lists and fatalities and economic woes and separations continue to rise, we may not feel much like rejoicing. But the great Henri Nouwen wrote about how joy can persist in even the saddest times. Well, happiness is dependent on the external conditions. Nouwen writes that joy is something deeper. It is, he writes, the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war or even death can take that love away. Reflecting on his own experiences of the commingling of joy and sorrow, Nguyen continues, I remember the most painful times of my life as times in which I became aware of a spiritual reality, much larger than myself, a reality that allowed, allowed me to live the pain with hope. Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. Our celebration this week and at Christmas is a countercultural declaration that even in sadness we rejoice because our hope is in the one whose birth we will celebrate in a few days' time, the one who is stronger than death, Jesus, Emmanuel, the Christ.
Amen.